Hello, and thank you for joining us today. This is the Christian Nomad on our Comics Nomad channel, and we are going to discuss telling good stories, and we're going to use Johnny Depp and Amber Heard as examples of that. Now, I know a lot has been said this and that about performances on the stand and whatnot, but the point isn't whether you believe any words that are coming out of either their mouths or if you believe all of them or none of them. The point is telling a good story. See, the average person has a hard time telling a story. Um, I always joke that women and children struggle to tell stories because they tell them in circles. But while that's somewhat true, that's pretty much true with everybody. One problem we have with a bunch of guys is that when they tell a story or acting, when they're trying to act, they don't sound believable when they're telling the story. Sometimes they're telling a story that actually happened to them and they don't sound believable telling their own story. And so we're going to look at what works and what doesn't work in telling a good story story. First, we're going to start out with Amber Heard. And how long approximately did the press tour go? I don't know exactly how long it lasted. Uh, I think, you know, there were uh, press engagements in this city for a few days and then another city for a few days. And then there was a break and then, then there was another press opportunity, I believe. So it was kind of spread out over, a, over maybe a month, if I'm guessing. So when you returned to Los Angeles, what, if anything, took place with any relationship with Mr. Depp? Now, one of the issues with the way Amber Heard has told this story, and we're going to look past all of the, whether she's looking at the, the jury on the side and back and whatnot, and the head movements and stuff. We're just going to say, telling the story, is it possible that people don't remember Details. Yes, I forget details all the time. I'm really good with big picture stuff, but I tend to forget just little tiny particular details. But then I'll remember little details that other people have no idea how you could remember. That's how our minds work. Generally, your mind will figure out something that or pick something that it just thinks is important, whether it is or not, doesn't matter. But when you're trying to tell a story, you kind of need to fill in details. You kind of just need to fill in details. And the thing that works with Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard is that pay attention to how Johnny Depp speaks. And I know there's a lot has been said about how slow he speaks, but notice how he's not just speaking slow to speak slow. He's being as precise as he can be. And he's actually using it. It's, it's, it's that Jimmy Stewart sort of thing where by being a little stuttery and, and speaking slow enough, and, but precise enough, he's actually ingratiating himself to you. Because he's giving you details. And the details he doesn't want to tell you about, he's just kind of stuttering over. And then he tells you the stuff, but he's giving you enough detail. And even when a detail is a little wrong, he's telling you it anyways. He's going to just sort of make something up. I mean, just add a little thing. You don't necessarily know how you got from this side of the room to that side of the room. Just tell the people, I walked over to the other side of the room. You don't say, I don't know how I got over there. Just tell them, let's watch. Let's watch Johnny Depp tell a story. It's not a happy week. It's not a happy month when you're constantly being told how wrong you are about this or that, what an idiot you are, um, or, 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 or anything. It, it, it just, uh, it, it, then, it, then it increased, increased, and it became an endless, um, it, it became an endless, that endless circle. Like, so as it escalated and continued to escalate, I went straight to what I had learned as a youth, which was to remove myself from the situation so that it couldn't continue because there's only so much your ears can hear and never forget. Um, so I would remove myself from the situation as I'd done as a youth um, as much as possible. Um, because I, 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 I just I certainly didn't believe that there was any need for these various subjects or arguments to come up and, and um, travel the distance that they did so very quickly to ramp up so fast. Um,
Notice how when he tells a story, he gives you details, but then he also gives you his feelings and his emotions at the time. And he adds these little extras in there to help you connect on a personal level with what he's saying. Whether you believe him or not isn't important. I really don't care. You're connecting on a more personal level because he's he's filling in those missing details. Now, we're going to play one more clip of both of them. And with Amber Heard, and never mind the fact that she's not producing tears from her eyes or whatever, the actual acting ability is not the point. The point is her telling the story. Notice how she'll fixate on a detail. She'll fixate on a detail, but then other details she, she just misses. So let's listen to Amber Heard. The whole hallway area outside of the bathroom, and he starts, you know, pat, pat, what it feels like patting me down or saying he's patting me down, I can't recall, but he ripped my dress, the um, uh, strap top part of my dress. I had just dyed this thing um, myself, pink, and I, this is one of those things I, I was like, you know, that's my, I just finished that dress. And um, he's like grabbing my, my, my breasts, he's touching my thighs, um, he rips my underwear off, um, and then he, he proceeds to do a cavity search. He was looking, he said he was looking for his drugs, his cocaine, his coke. I was wondering how I, somebody who didn't do cocaine and was against it, that was in and of itself causing problems in our relationship. How could I hide? Why would I hide his drugs from like, I, like he was insinuating that I was doing it or something? It made no sense. And he was telling me we're doing, we're going to, we're going to conduct a cavity search, shall we? Like, just shoved his fingers inside me. So, okay, evidently, and I'm going to say this just straight up. Evidently, something happened where he, he did actually rip the top of her dress or something. I don't think he was being abusive towards her. I have a feeling they were out there in this scenario taking mdma and mushrooms and stuff having hallucinations so who knows what actually happened i have a feeling something happened she takes a turn she moves something he reaches out grabs her shoulder strap of her dress and it tore and that really bothers her so notice she just fixates on that but other details she's like i don't she doesn't know should it should it be a cavity search that i called a kid he called a cavity did, i don't know but just slow down see that's what johnny depp has on his side is he slows down and he just tells a story. So if she were to slow down, look forward. Don't worry about looking at the jury. Just look forward. Look at the floor if she has to. Look at her fingers if she has to. And just be like, you know, he grabbed me. He ripped my dress. That was an important dress to me. I just died it myself. And then he pushed me against the cabinets and he put two fingers inside me and started searching. He said he needed to find his drugs and he thought I had them. Just tell the story. Just slow it down. Tell the story. Give the details. And if you're missing a detail, just add it in. And if it's something you're, you're like, I can't just lie about that because that's a lie. It might not be a lie. You might be right. But if it is a lie and you have a problem, that's fine also. Just go ahead and tell the details and tell the story and tell it well. The last thing we're going to listen to is Johnny Depp tells the story. And I want you to notice how that he, the way he tells certain details and the way he illustrates with his hands, and the way that he pauses and gives a little extra inflection on certain elements. These are the traits of a storyteller. This is what really connects with somebody when you're telling a story. First, first we went to Malcolm's apartment where he was staying while we were shooting the film uh, and tried to clean uh, my hand because I had worked the day before, and obviously when you're playing a pirate, Captain Jack or whatever, they, you're, you're covered, you're, they paint with, on with alcohol, um, with rubbing alcohol, they paint dirt all into your 
hands and into your face and everything. So they were they were worried about getting my finger clean, so they tried doing that at Malcolm's, and then Kipper said, no, we've got to get to an emergency room, and we've got to get hold of the tip of his finger. So we went to the emergency room. Um, the doctor asked me what happened, <clears throat> and uh, I lied to him. I said that I had uh, smashed it in, um, in, in these large accordion doors that it got caught in the accordion doors. Why uh, would you lie about that? I lied because I, I did not, I didn't feel, I, I didn't want to disclose that it So you see what he did here, there, where he slowed it down, he talks about it, he, he, it might sound imprecise in some of the words he's using, if you're a linguist or you know English very well, he's not using all the correct words. That's fine. That's that's very folksy. That 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 again, it connects to people. Uh, he is stuttering a little bit here and there, but it's because it comes off as he's trying to find the perfect words to say. Not that he's just going, "Oh, I don't remember this," but whatever. Blah, blah. No, he's he's trying to find the perfect words. One important thing about storytelling is slow down, think your way through it. What should come next? Okay, so someone grabs you, and the next part you want to talk about is being on the other side of the room. And let's just say you did stuff you feel is wrong. Like, someone grabbed you, you punched them, and, sh you know, fought, and all this different stuff, and somehow you ended up over on the other side. Okay, and you don't want to acknowledge that you punched somebody. Still, you say, he grabbed me. You know, we had a little bit of a tussle back and forth. I ran to the other side of the room. That's it. You just skip past the part you don't want to say. You just have to slow it down. And think your way through it. And think from point to point to point. And people will not get upset if you have pauses in there so that you can find the words. Even if you're lying and the pauses are for you to make up the words, it still has the same effect as a person who is slowing down and finding the perfect words. So, this a little thing we can learn about how to tell a good story using Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. As examples, I hope you've enjoyed what you saw. You know, like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff that we talk about on here all the time. And if you hated it, give it a down vote and tell me how much I suck in the comments and what I should do better or where I should go. With that, I am the Christian Nomad, thanking you for watching, and God bless. I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted 